Hello guys! Our next video is about sample journal entries on investment. We have the following forms of investment in business. Cash investment, cash investment where a portion of the cash is deposited in the bank. Cash and non-cash investment. Investment with assumption of liabilities. An investment of asset with a fair market value. So how are you going to analyze transactions? So for each of the transactions, answer the following questions. So you have to answer the four questions para ikaw ay mahagawa ng journal entries. So ganito mag-analyze. First, what are the accounts affected by the transaction? Next, what type of account is affected? Next, should the account be increased or decreased? And should the account be debited or credited? Later, we're going to have examples kung paano siya ina-analyze depende sa mga examples natin. In analyzing transactions and in preparing journal entries, you have to remember the following. The rules of double entry system are always observed in each transaction. So, always observed in each transaction. So, ano ba yung rules ng double entry system? Una, two or more accounts are affected by each transaction. So, at least two or it can be more than two accounts, pero hindi pwedeng bababa sa two. Then, the sum of the debits for every transaction equals the sum of the credits. Yung total amount mo sa debit at yung total amount mo sa credit dapat ay equals lang dalawa. Pag hindi sila equal, something is wrong. Then, the equality of the accounting equation is always maintained. So, lagi yung tatandaan to, uh, kapag uh, kahit gano kadami yung transactions kapag i-check natin yung accounting equation laging asset is equal to liabilities plus owner's equity so kahit gaano kadami yung transactions basta tama yung entries mo okay what is this one? so sa mga nakapanood na ng video tungkol dito this is just a review of the rules on debits and credits so May video tayo about this, yung the account, debits and credits, and the double entry system. You can check the list of the videos for more details about this. But let, let us have a review of this bago tayo mag-analyze yung transactions. So, nakikita nyo dito, we have D plus E plus A is equal to L plus E plus R. So, D stands for drawings, E is expenses, A assets, L liability, E equity, and R revenue. So, D is equal to L E R or LER. So, D LER. In short, ang tatandaan natin is D LER. Okay, so, paano ba ang gagawin dito? So, yung mga naka-red, ito yung D E A or D. Ano to? Ito yung may mga uh, normal balances na debit. Ang may mga normal balances na debit. Ano yung mga yon? We have drawings, expenses, and assets. Ang normal balance nila ay debit. O para madaling tandaan, D, debit. O, diba? Funny siya or nakakatawa, pero mas madaling tandaan. D, debit. D is drawings, expenses, and assets. Their normal balance is debit. Ano ibig sabihin na pag ang normal balance nila ay debit. Ano ibig sabihin nito? Ang ibig sabihin nito, kapag ang effect ng transaction is ini-increase niya si drawings, expenses, or assets, tayo ay mag-debit. Ulitin ko. If the effect of the transaction is ini-increase or dinadagdagan niya si drawings, expenses, or assets, tayo ay mag-debit. So, the following are recorded as debits, increases in drawing, increases in expenses, and increases in assets. And what if ang effect ng transaction ay binabawasan niya? Si drawing, si expenses, at saka si assets. Anong gagawin natin? O ano ba ang kabaliktara ng debit? O syempre, credit. So, if ang effect ng transaction ay binabawasan niya si drawings, expenses and assets tayo ay mag credit so the following are recorded as credits decreases in drawing decreases in expenses and decreases in assets now we go to this portion ito yung green or yung lure ano ito 
liability, equity, and revenue. Ito naman ang may mga normal balances na credit. Ang kanilang normal balances ay credit. Meaning, if ang effect ng transaction is dinadagdagan, si liability, si equity, or si revenue, tayo ay mag-credit. So, the following are recorded as credits. Increases in liabilities, equity, and revenue. Paano naman kung ang effect ng transaction ay binabawasan niya? Si liability, si equity, at saka si revenue. Siyempre, ang kabaliktara ng credit ay debit. So, kapag ang effect ng transaction ay binabawasan, si liability, equity, at revenue, tayo ay mag-debit. I hope maliwanag ha? Yan. Now we go to example of transactions. Saka paano mag-analyze at mag-prepare ng journal entries. We have cash investment. Etong ating transaction. May 1, Peter Suarez invested 50,000 in the business. Peter Suarez invested 50,000 in the business. So ang ininvest lamang ni owner ay cash. So analyze natin yung transaction. Unang tanong, ano nga pag mag-analyze ng transaction? Ano ang account na affected? Ano bang ba account na affected? Hmm. Cash. Siyempre, di ba? Cash. Bakit affected si cash? Kasi nagkaroon ng pera eh. Nag-invest si owner sa business. Anong klaseng account or what type of account is cash? This is an asset. Cash is an asset. Next question is, when Peter Suarez invested 50000 in the business, what happened to our asset? Nadagdagan ba or nabawasan? Nag-increase or nag-decrease? O, analyze natin ano bang nangyari. Dati, wala pang pera ang business. Nung naglagay si Peter Suarez, ang owner, ng 50000 pesos, from 0 to 50000 so what happened to our cash? Nadagdagan, nag-increase. Okay, ano pa ang account na affected? Capital. Bakit capital? Siyempre, nag-invest si owner. So, we have capital. What type of account is capital? This is owner's capital. Then, increase ba or decrease? Ano ba ang effect? Nung si Peter Suarez ay nag-invest ng 50,000 in the business, what is the effect of this in our owner's capital? Nadagdagan ba o nabawasan? O syempre, nung naglagay ng pera si Peter Suarez sa business, nadagdagan ang capital, kaya increase. So, ano ba ang rules? Balikan natin yung rules. Kapag nag-increase daw ang asset, tayo ay mag-de-debit. Diba nga? D. Sa dealer, D. Nandun ang asset. So, debit. Kaya tayo ay mag-de-debit ng cash. Ano pa ang rule? Kapag nag-increase ang equity or capital, tayo ay mag-credit. Ito yung sa LER. Ito yung sa LER. Equity. Pag nag-increase, tayo ay mag-credit. So, ano ang ating entry? On May 1, our entry will be debit cash, 50,000 pesos, credit Suarez Capital, 50,000 pesos. Ang ating description, that is initial investment. Check natin kung walang violation sa double entry system. Total ng debit, total ng credit ay equal. Okay? I hope na intindihan. Now we go to the next example. Dito naman, we have cash investment where a portion of the cash is deposited in the bank. So this is the transaction. May 1, Peter Suarez invested 50000 in the business, half of which was immediately deposited in the bank. Kapag ganito ang case na yung pera natin ay nakahate or yung pera natin ay may portion na on hand at may portion na nasa banko, then magkakaroon tayo ng dalawang account sa cash. Yung tinatawag natin cash in bank at saka cash on hand. Okay, let us analyze. What accounts are affected? Cash on hand. Anong type ng account si cash on hand? Siyempre, asset. What happened to cash on hand na nag-invest si owner? O nag-increase or nadagdagan? 
Ano pa ang account na affected? We have cash in, bank. Anong type of account? Asset. What happened to our asset no nag-invest si owner? Nag-increase. What account pa ang affected? We have capital. What type of account? This is owner's capital. Nag-increase ba siya or nag-decrease? Of course, nag-increase. So, ano ba ang rules? Kapag nag-increase ang asset, tayo ay dapat mag-debit. Kapag, ayan, debit yan. Debit cash on hand, debit cash on bank. Kapag nag-increase equity or capital, tayo ay mag-credit. Ayan. So, what will be our journal entry on May 1? Debit cash on hand, 25,000. Debit cash and bank, 25,000. Kasi sabi, half of which daw. So, 50,000 yung pera. Kalahate ay dineposit sa banko. Kalahate ay naiwan on hand. So, tig 25,000 credits, whereas capital magkano? 50,000. Check natin, equal ba ang total ng ating, ito o, oh, ang total ng ating debits, 50,000. Credit, 50,000. Dapat equal sila. I hope na intindihan na. Next, we go to the next transaction. We have cash and non-cash investments. Cash and non-cash investments. Ano naman yung cash and non-cash investments? Ito yung si owner ay nag-invest ng pera at saka nag-invest din siya ng non-cash. Ano yun? Ito yung mga assets na hindi cash. Example, buildings, land, uh, furnitures, equipments. Supplies. Okay. Ito yung mga non-cash na investment. Kasi pag ikaw yung owner, pwede ka mag-invest ng cash at saka non-cash na investment. So, let us have this transaction. May 1, Peter Suarez invested the following in the business. Cash of 50,000 and office equipment of 10,000 pesos. So, ano yung, magkano yung cash? 50,000. Yung non-cash na in-invest ay ang office equipment amounting to 10,000 pesos. Pesos. Let us analyze the transaction. So, ano ang mga accounts na affected? Cash, syempre. We have cash. What type of account is cash? Asset. What happened to asset? When Peter Suarez invested 50,000 a cash, of course, nag-increase. Then we have office equipment. Another account affected is office equipment. What type of account is office equipment? Ano nga? Asset. Okay. Ano ang nangyari nang nag-invest ng office equipment? What happened to our asset? Nag-increase or nadagdagan. What else is affected? Capital, of course. This is owner's capital. Kasi bakit capital or owner's capital ulit? Kasi nga, this is investment ni owner. Basta nag-invest si owner, lagi yung tatandaan, dapat meron doong capital na account. So, increase or decrease ba ang effect ng transaction? O, nag-increase. Nadagdagan ang ating capital. Now, we have to analyze. So, rules muna. Ano ba ang rules? Kapag nag-increase ang asset, tayo ay magde-debit. Kaya, we debit cash, we debit office equipment. Pag nag-increase ang equity or capital, tayo ay mag-credit. Kaya, we credit capital. Now, we go to our journal entry. On May 1, what will be our entry? Debit, cash. Magkano? Magkano ba yung ating cash? 50,000. And then, we debit, office equipment, 10,000. Ito nyo mabuti ha. Ayan na naka-debit ha. Debit, cash. Ayan. Debit, office equipment. Ayan yon. Okay. Saan nakuha yung amount? 50,000. Ito siya. 10,000. Ito siya. Okay. What will be our credit? Of course, Suarez Capital. Magkano? Itotal lamang natin, 60,000. Kasi ang in-invest, cash at non-cash, total of 60,000. Now, we check if they are equal. Ayan. Dapat, equal C. Total ni debit, 60,000. Total ni debit, 60,000. Next, investment with assumption of liability. Ano naman ito? Minsan si owner, nag invest siya ng assets niya. Pero, inutang niya to. May balanse pa na utang. Ibig sabihin, binibigay niya yung 
asset niya sa business, pero yung asset na yun, okay, na ini-invest niya, ay meron pang liability na nakakabit or merong utang. So, ang laging question dito is that, sino na ang magbabayad ng natitirang utang or ng balance sa liability kapag in-invest niya ito sa business? Kung si business na, yung sinasabi natin, with assumption of liability, meaning si business na ang magbabayad ng utang, so ganito ang ating mga transactions. So, May 1, Peter Suarez invested cash of 30000 and an office equipment costing 20000 which he bought last year. There is an outstanding liability of 10,000 pesos in the equipment which will be assumed by the business. So, ang ini-invest ni owner ay cash na 30000 at office equipment na binili niya at 20000 Pero yung office equipment, ano daw? May utang pa siya doon na 10000 Ngayon, yung utang daw na 10000 ay alen to be assumed by the business. So, ibig sabihin ang magbabayad na IC business. So, let us analyze. Ano ang accounts affected? Cash, of course. Anong type of account? Asset. What happened to asset? Nag-increase. Ano pang pa affected? Office equipment, syempre. Anong type of account si office equipment? Asset. Okay. Asset. Then, what happened to asset? Of course, nadagdagan. Okay? Ano pa ang affected? We have accounts payable. Ano ba yung accounts payable? This is a liability account. Ito yung utang. Oh. Anong klaseng account siya? Liability. What happened to accounts payable or to liability nung nag-invest si Peter Suarez ng equipment na may utang to be assumed by the business? Siyempre, dati wala pang utang sa business. Or, anong effect? Nadagdagan ang utang ni business. So, increase in liability. And then, what else? Of course, capital, type of account, owner's capital. What happened to capital? Of course, nag-increase. Now, what are the rules? Kapag nag-increase ang asset, debit, kaya debit cash, debit tayo ng equipment kasi nag-increase ang asset. Ngayon, Anong rule? Kapag nag-increase ang liability and equity, oh, kung natatandaan nyo, ito yung seller. Normal balance nila ay credit. Kapag nag-increase, ano daw? Credit. Yeah. Yeah, credit tayo. So, what will be the entry? Debit. Cash, 30,000. Debit. Office equipment, 20,000. Bakit 20,000? Ayun eh, naman talaga ang Halaga niya, 20,000. Then, credit accounts payable. Magkano yung utang? 10,000. So, bakit pati isasali yung utang? Kasi nga yung utang, magiging utang na ni business. And then, Suarez Capital, magkano? Paano i-co-compute? Ang total investment, 30,000 plus 20,000 minus yung liability na assumed by the business. Minus 10,000. So, we'll get 40,000. So, ayan siya, 30,000 yung cash, 20,000 ang equipment, minus ang 10,000. So, ang totoo talaga na in-invest ni Suarez ay magkano lang? 40,000 lang. Ito lang ang totoong in-invest niya. Kasi nga yung 10,000, babayaran niya ng business. Okay? Check natin, equal ba? 30 plus 20,000, 50 sa credit, we have 50,000. So, equal sila ano? I hope na iintindihan ha? Then, next is investment of asset with a fair market value. May mga owners na nag invest ng assets tapos masasalubong natin sa transaction, dalawa ang given niya at cost at saka at fair market value. So, nalilito tayo, ano pang ba isasama natin sa pag-entry? Yung pagbili or yung fair market value? So, Check muna natin the definition of fair market value. So, what is fair market value? It is the amount which the seller will receive for selling a non-cash asset at the present time and in its present condition. So, ano daw ito? Ito yung pagbinenta mo, yung asset ngayon. O, ngayon na kasi kung binili mo ito 5 years ago, o, kung binenta mo ito ngayon, mabibenta mo siya sa ganitong halaga. O, yun yung kanyang fair market 
value. So, para mas maintindihan, ito ang example natin na transaction. May 1, Peter Suarez invested cash of 30000 and an office equipment costing 40000 which he bought 3 years ago, but with a fair market value of 25000 So, ano ang in-invest? We have cash, 30000 at office equipment, 40000 Pero, 3 years ago pa yung 40000 na yan na halaga. Ngayon, pag ibibenta natin siya, ang fair market value niya ay 25000 na lang. So, analyze tayo. Ano ang mga accounts affected? Of course, cash. Ano ang cash? Asset. Ano nangyari sa asset? Increase. Next, ano pa? Office equipment. Asset ito. Ano nangyari? Nag-increase. Then, we have capital, of course. Type of account. Owner's capital. What happened to capital? Nag-increase. Now, we have the rules. Pag nag-increase ang asset, debit, kaya debit cash, debit equipment then pag nag-increase ang equity or capital credit okay paano ang ating transaction ay ang ating journal entry on may 1 we debit cash magkano ba ang cash 30000 debit office equipment magkano buti na mabuti ha kung magkano ilalagay natin amount 25000 so laging tatandaan if given ang cost eto at fair market value, ano ang gagamitin nating amount? Ang gagamitin natin ay ang fair market value. Ulitin ko, if given, kapag nag-invest si owner ha, sa business, at given yung cost ng ini-invest niya, na non-cash asset, tapos given ang fair market value, ang i-record natin ay fair market value. Then, credit tayo, Suarez Capital, 55000 So, let us check. Initial investment equal to 55000 and then 55000 So, I hope maliwanag tayo. So, para mas madaling tandaan, uh, mag-analyze muna ng transactions and then, laging tatandaan ang rules ng debit sa credit. So, madali lang naman mag-prepare ng journal entries. Ang nakakalito lang talaga is that yung hindi mo alam yung effect ng transaction doon sa mga accounts or hindi mo alam ang apektado ng mga accounts so, malaki talaga ang magiging problema kaya very important that you are familiar with the accounts next, alam mo i-classify kung ito ay anong klase ng account next, yung transaction alam mo kung ano ang effect nito increase ba or decrease and then you know the rules yung sa ating debit and credit so tatandaan lamang yung dealer. So, I hope na unawaan. So, next na mga videos, more tayo sa mga journal entries ulit, examples ulit ng iba't iba na mga, mga cases or transactions. So, hopefully, naintindihan ninyo. And thank you. Kung hindi pa nakapag-subscribe, click subscribe. Hopefully, nakatulong itong video sa inyo. Thank you and God bless. Hello guys! Our video is about journal entries on acquisition of assets. So some of the transactions of business organizations or business entities involve acquisition of assets or buying of assets. So in this video, we're going to discuss examples of these transactions and how are we going to record them. Let us have this transaction. Equipment acquired on cash basis, so that is the sample of transaction. June 8, bought office equipment for 10,000 pesos. Again, on June 8, bought office equipment for 10,000 pesos. So, let us analyze the transaction. Again, let us have a review. How are you going to analyze a transaction? In my previous videos, I already discussed how to analyze transactions. So, you are going to answer four questions. Uh, the first question is, what are the accounts affected? So, after analyzing the transactions, you are going to identify, oh, anong accounts ba ang affected because of this transaction? Then, after identifying the accounts affected, you are going to classify now these accounts kung anong type sila ng account. Example, asset ba sila, liability ba sila, expense ba sila. 
And then the third question is, what is the effect of this transaction to the account? Nag-increase ba or nag-decrease? Oh, nadagdagan ba or nabawasan? And then the fourth question is, am I going to debit or credit this account? So magde-debit ba ako or magi-credit ba ako? So before preparing the journal entries, first analyze the transaction. Balikan natin sa transaction, June 8, bought office equipment for 10,000 pesos. So what are the accounts affected? Office equipment. Okay, bakit naapektuhan sa office equipment? Siyempre, bumili tayo ng office equipment. So, affected sa office equipment. Anong type ng account sa office equipment? This is an asset. Okay, it is an asset. Now, nung bumili tayo ng office equipment, ano ang nangyari sa ating asset? Nadagdagan ba or nabawasan? Okay, nag-increase or nadagdagan. So, bakit nag-increase? Kasi, kung dati wala tayong asset, after nating bumili, nagkaroon. So, nadagdagan. Or dati, konti lang yung asset natin, bumili tayo, sa ano nangyari, mas dumami yung ating asset. So, nadagdagan ang kanyang effect. Another account affected is cash. Bakit affected si cash? Eh kasi, bumili tayo on cash basis. So, affected si cash. Now, what type of account is cash? It is an asset. Okay, ano naman ang effect ng ating transaction sa asset or sa cash nag-increase ba or nag-decrease okay, nag-decrease bakit siya nag-decrease or bakit nabawasan ang ating asset or cash kasi nga bumili tayo so nung bumili tayo ng equipment ano nangyari sa ating pera nabawasan kasi nagbayad tayo ulitin ko ha yung office equipment na dagdagan kasi nagkaroon tayo ng office equipment Ang ating cash na bawasan kasi nagbayad tayo, lumabas ang pera. Now, sa fourth question na, am I going to debit or credit this account? Babalikan natin ang rules on debits and credits. So, kapag hindi pa marunong, pwede yung balikan yung video tungkol sa dealer. Uh, I have a video or may technique doon kung paano madaling matandaan yung rules kung kailan ka magde-debit, kailan ka mag-credit. So, balikan natin ang rules. Ano daw ang mangyayari? Kapag nag-increase ang asset, anong ginagawa natin? Tayo ay nag-de-debit. Okay, so, meaning, we are going to debit office equipment. Kapag nag-decrease si asset, Anong mangyayari? Tayo daw dapat ay mag-credit. So, ibig sabihin, tayo ay mag-credit ng cash. Let us prepare the journal entry. Okay, the date first, June 8. Unahin natin yung ating debit. So, debit office equipment. Magkano? 10,000 pesos. And then, credit cash. Magkano? 10,000 pesos. So, lagay natin ang ating brief explanation. So, purchase equipment for cash. And then, we always check if the total of debits or debit and credits or credit ay equal. Kasi lagi silang equal dapat. Pag hindi sila equal, something is wrong. Okay. Let us go to the next example. Uh, supplies acquired on cash basis. O, bumili tayo ng supplies. On cash basis. So, this is the transaction. June 10, bought office supplies for 2,000 pesos. Let us analyze the transaction. Anong accounts affected? Of course, office supplies or pwedeng supplies. Type of account? O anong klaseng account ba si supplies? Asset. What happened to supplies or to asset? Nung bumili tayo ng office supplies. O, nadagdagan. Nag-increase ang ating office supplies. Again, ano pang account affected? We have cash. Anong type ng account? This is an asset. What happened to our asset or to our cash after buying office supplies for 2,000 pesos? Nag-decrease kasi nga nagbayad tayo. Lumabas yung pera so nabawasan si cash. Balikan natin ang rules. Increases in asset with debit. So debit office supplies. Decreases in asset with credit. So credit cash. Now we go to journal entry, the date, June 10, debit office supplies. So nakikita nyo ha kung saan ang gagaling yung debit 
saan ang gagaling yung credit. So, debit office supplies, 2,000 pesos. Credit cash, 2,000 pesos. And then, a brief explanation, bought supplies. And then, check natin kung equal silang dalawa. So, dapat equal sila. Now, another example, purchased furniture on cash basis or furniture acquired on cash basis. On June 11, bought tables and chairs for 7,500. So, pag sinabi natin tables and chairs, ang account na dapat pumasok sa isip natin ay furniture. Analysis ng transaction, anong accounts ang affected? Furniture and fixture or pwedeng furniture, pwedeng office furniture, store furniture, depende sa ginamit na account or sa chart of accounts. Anong type ng accounts si furniture and fixture? We have asset. What happened to our asset when we bought tables and chairs? Of course, nag-increase. Then, ano pang affected? Cash. Anong type ng account si cash? Asset. What happened to cash when we, when we buy tables and chairs or when we bought tables and chairs? Nag-decrease. Okay, nabawasan. So, balikan ng rules. Increases in asset, debit. So, debit tayo ng furniture and fixture. Decreases in asset, credit. So, credit tayo ng cash. Journal entry natin, the date, June 11. Debit, furniture and fixture, 7,500. Credit cash, 7,500. So, ano ba yung transaction? Purchase of tables and chairs. O, equal ba sila? Yes. Okay, so I hope na intindihan na. Then, we have equipment acquired on account. Pag sinabing on account, anong ibig sabihin nito? Uh, pag sinabing on account, ibig sabihin utang. So, ano daw nangyari? Uh, bumili tayo ng equipment on account or we acquired equipment on account. So, example of transaction, June 8, bought office equipment on account. Magkano? 10,000 pesos. So, pag sinabing on account, utang yun na Utang. So, analyze tayo ng transaction. Anong accounts ang affected? Office equipment. What type of account? Of course, this is asset. What happened to our asset? Nag-increase. O, nagkaroon tayo ng equipment eh. And then, anong next account affected? Accounts payable. Anong ibig sabihin ng accounts payable? Ibig sabihin nito, meron tayong utang. Okay, bayaran ito. Obligation. Kaya, classified ito as liability. What happened to our liability? Nung tayo ay bumili ng office equipment on account, what happened to our liability? Nag-increase. Bakit nag-increase? O nadagdagan ang utang natin. So, punta tayo sa rules. Increases in asset, debit. Okay, so we debit office equipment. Then, increases in liability, we credit. So, we credit accounts payable. Let us have the journal entry. June 8, debit office equipment, magkano? 10,000 pesos. Credit accounts payable, 10,000 pesos. So, what is the transaction? Purchase of equipment on account. And then, check again if total nilang dalawa ay equal. O, ba? Madali lang. Okay. Next, supplies acquired on account. June 10, bought office supplies on account, 2,000 pesos. So, what are the accounts affected? Of course, office supplies, type of account, asset. Ano nangyari sa ating asset? Nag-increase. Ano pa ang affected? Accounts payable. Anong type ng account ito? Liability. What happened to our liability or accounts payable? Nag-increase. So, rules. Increases in asset, debit. So, we debit office supplies. Increases in liability. Credit. So, we credit accounts payable. Kaya nga, oh, journal entry. Okay. Ano ating journal entry? On June 10, we debit office supplies. O, oh, saan galing yan? Yan siya, oh. We debit office supplies. Okay. Yan, office supplies. Debit. Kaya dito siya. Then, next is, Ah, magkano ang amount? 2,000 pesos. Then, we credit accounts payable. So, we credit. This is the account. Accounts payable. Kaya dito siya. 
then 2,000 pesos and then the short description and check if the total of debit and credit is equal. I hope uh, naintindihan. Then again, example, furniture acquired on account. June 11, bought tables and chairs, 7,500 terms, 2 over 10 and over 30. O pag ganyan na may terms at wala namang sinabi na may down payment, ibig sabihin inutang yan. Okay, so ano ibig sabihin ng 2 over 10 and over 30? Ang ibig sabihin yan nito, 2 over 10 is... Kapag nagbayad ka within 10 days, kasi inutang mo lang to, meron kang 2% na cash discount. Ano yung N over 30? Ito yung credit period mo. So, you have to pay your utang within 30 days. So, the transaction is June 11, bought tables and chairs, 7,500. You get 2% discount if you pay within 10 days, but you have to pay within 30 days. Let us analyze transaction, accounts affected, furniture and fixture, kasi tables and chairs ito. Anong type ng account yan? Asset. Then, nag-increase ba or nag-decrease? O nag-increase, kasi bumili tayo. Ano pa? Accounts payable. Anong type ng account? Liability. Anong nangyari sa liability nung tayo ay? Bumili ng furniture on account. Nadagdagan. So, rules. Increases in asset, debit. So, with debit, furniture, and fixture. Increases in liability, we credit. So, we have credit accounts payable. So, journal entry natin, June 11. Furniture and fixture. O, saan galing yan? Ito yan, o. Debit kasi siya. Debit, furniture, and fixture. 7,500. Then, credit accounts payable. Asa na si accounts payable? Ayan. Credit. Credit accounts payable. Magkano? 7,500. So, purchase of tables and chairs on account. Again, check if they are equal. Next, equipment acquired on account with down payment. Sometimes, if we are uh, purchasing or acquiring an asset or something, uh, we... Uh, purchase them on account pero a portion of that nagbibigay tayo ng down payment di ba uso yan so para o oh, bigay mo na akong down payment tayong natira utang so how are we going to record this transaction so example June 15 bought equipment 20,000 with a down payment of 5,000 so tingnan natin mabuti ha bumili tayo ng equipment magkanong halaga nung binili natin 20,000 May down payment tayong magkano? 5,000. So, magkano yung hindi pa natin nababayaran? 15,000. Ano yung 15,000? O, yun yung ating utang. Okay. Yun yung ating accounts payable. So, analyze natin ano ang affected. So, you see, we have three accounts affected here. The first account is office equipment. Of course, asset ito. Ano nangyari? Nadagdagan. Next, cash. Bakit naman apektado si cash? Eh kasi ayan o, may down payment tayong 5,000 pesos. So meaning, apektado si cash. Anong type ng account si cash? Asset. Anong nangyari kay cash nung tayo ay nagbigay ng down payment, nag-decrease or nabawasan? Ano pang affected? Accounts payable. Anong type ng account ito? Ito ay liability. So, what happened to liability? When we bought equipment, 20,000 pesos, pero may down payment na portion lamang. Hindi natin nabayaran lahat. So, what happened to liability? Nag-increase. Okay, nag-increase. So, let us have the rules. Increases in asset, debit. So, debit tayo ng equipment. Kasi nadagdagan si, si, no, si asset. Decreases in asset, okay? We have decreased ng cash. Ano daw mangyayari? Tayo ay magki-credit, so we credit cash. And then, increases in liability. And yun, si accounts payable. Credit tayo. So, let us have the transaction. June 15, debit office equipment, magkano? 20,000. Kasi yun yung ating 
binili. Yun ang halaga niya. So, we record it at 20,000. Okay. We credit cash. Bakit tayo mag-credit ng cash? O, kasi, ang effect ng transaction ay nabawasan si cash. Magkano? O, kung magkano yung down payment. Ayan. Down payment ay 5,000. So, 5,000 din siya. Tinan nyo, oh, hindi sila pantay. May kulang na 15,000. Ano ba yun? Yung 15,000 na yun. Yun yung accounts payable. Magkano? 15,000. So, makikita nyo dito, ang binili nating equipment ay 20,000. Nagbigay lang tayo ng cash na 5,000. And then, the balance is utang or accounts payable. So, magkano yung balance? 15,000. So, purchased equipment on account with down payment. That is the brief description. And then, check natin. Equal ba? Yes. Equal. Parehong 20,000. Next, furniture acquired on account by issuing a note. Sometimes, we acquire assets on account. Pero, yung inuutangan natin, gusto nilang maniguro. Okay. Paano? O, they want us to issue a note. Ano ba yung note? It is a promissory note. So, pag nakita natin na merong note, lagi nating tatandaan na, ah, okay. Kung merong note, lapat ang pumasok sa utak ninyo ay, ano kaya ito? Note receivable or notes payable? O, depende. Kapag tayo ang nag-issue ng note, o tayo ay merong notes payable. So, let us have this transaction. Bought tables and chairs, 7,500 by issuing a note. So, bumili tayo ng tables and chairs, utang, syempre. Anong kapalit? Nag-issue tayo ng promissory note. Anong accounts affected? Furniture and fixture. Anong type ng account? Asset. Ano nangyari? Nag-increase. Nadagdagan ng ating tables and chairs eh. Then, we have notes payable. Ano ito? This is a liability. Okay, this is a liability. Bakit payable? Kasi nga, tayo ang nag-issue. Tayo ang nangangako na magbabayad. So, payable, we have a liability. So, what happened to our liability when we issued a note? Okay? Nag-increase. Nadagdagan. Bakit? Nadagdagan yung notes payable natin eh. Now, the rules. Increases in asset, debit. So, debit, furniture, and fixture. Increases in liability, credit. So, credit, notes payable. Journal entry, the date, June 11. Debit, furniture, and fixture, magkano? 7,500. Credit, notes payable? 7,500. This is a purchase of tables and chairs by issuing a note. So, check natin, equal ba? Yes, equal sila. Then, let us have this one. Purchase of a machine with incidental expenses. Ano yung incidental expenses? Ito yung mga, may mga ginastos ka pa bago mo siya gamitin sa operation sa business. Kasi bumibili tayo ng mga assets to be used in the operation. So, example nito, yung mga insurance, transportation, or freight. Okay. Kapag in-import mo pa to galing sa ibang bansa, may mga customs fees, okay, at marami pang iba. So, let us have this transaction. On June 18, bought a machine from Japan, 80,000 pesos. The following expenses were paid. Freight, 5,000. Ano yung freight? Ito yung sa transportation cost. Then, insurance, 1,000. And other charges, 2,000 pesos. So, itong freight, insurance, saka other charges, eto yung mga tinatawag nating incidental expenses. So, paano ba natin sila i -re record yung mga incidental expenses? So, let us analyze the transaction. Anong accounts affected o machinery? Anong klaseng account ito? Asset. Nag-increase ba or nag-decrease? O, syempre, nadagdagan. Bumili tayo eh. Nagkaroon tayo ng machine, so nadagdagan. Then, cash. Affected si cash. Bakit? Bumili tayo eh. Walang sinabi na utang siya. Walang sinabi na nag-issue tayo ng note. So, it is understood na ito ay binili natin ng cash. Type of account? Asset. Then, ano nangyari sa cash? O, syempre, nag-decrease kasi bumili tayo, lumabas ang pera. So, analyze tayo. Increases in asset, debit. 
so we debit machinery. Decreases in asset is credit, so we credit cash. Now let's have uh, the journal entry. So the date first, June 11, then debit machinery, 88,000. So paano naging 88,000 yun? Okay, paano naging 88,000? Take note of this one. The cost of a fixed asset daw, okay, that is machinery. Example of a fixed asset is machinery. So what is the cost of a fixed asset? It is equal to the invoice cost. Ano yung invoice cost? Kung magkano mo pinili. Okay, invoice cost plus all the incidental charges in connection with its acquisition. Other charges like installation cost to put the asset into use will likewise be part of cost. However, after using the asset for some time, repairs will be charged to a proper expense account like repairs expense. So, paano siya naging 88,000? Asa na yun? Okay. Paano siya naging 88,000 yan? Paano ba naging 88,000 yan? Kasi binili lamang natin ng 80,000. So, ayan. Yan siya. 80,000, that is the invoice cost. Plus, the incidental charges. What are example of incidental charges? We have freight, insurance, and other charges. So, that is what? Total of 8,000. So, 80,000 plus 5,000 plus 1,000 plus 2,000. We have 88,000. I hope na hukuha, ha? And then, we credit cash. Magkano? Magkano ba lumabas na pera? Of course, 88,000 lahat yung binayaran mo. So, we purchase machinery. Again, check kung equal sila. So, laging tatandaan, anong uh, mga expenses or mga incidental expenses ang pwede lamang idagdag sa cost ng fixed asset. Ito lamang ay ano daw? Incidental charges or expenses in connection with its acquisition. Example, binili mo siya sa Japan. So, paano siya makarating dito sa Philippines? So, syempre, ah, uh, Ita travel siya sa aeroplano, nagbayad tayo ng 5,000. O nagbayad din tayo ng insurance kasi nga pag dina-travel natin may insurance o may iba pang charges like mga customs fee or mga kung ano-ano pang mga charges. So basta lahat ng incidental charges na connected or related sa pagbili, okay? Ano pa? Sa installation or lahat ng ginastos mo bago mo siya gamitin sa operation sa business or bago mo siya gamitin sa iyong business, lahat ng yon ay considered as part of the cost of the fixed asset. So, idadagdag mo yon saan? Sa invoice cost. Paano kung uh, nagamit mo na yung, ano, yung machine tapos bigla siyang nasira? O kapag na-start mo na siyang gamitan, tapos bigla siyang nasira, pinaayos mo, idadagdag pa ba natin sa cost ng machinery? Hindi na. Yun ay i-charge na natin sa ala, saan? Sa expense. Example of that is repairs expense. So, expense na siya. Hindi na siya part ng ating fixed asset. I hope this is clear. Then, we go to payment of account of fixed asset with a discount. Sometimes, we purchase or we acquire fixed assets or assets na merong discount. Kapag may discount, depende kasi yan eh. O nakabayad ba tayo within the discount period o uh, beyond the discount period. So, tingnan natin. Furniture acquired on account. Actually, ito yung sample natin kanina. So, June 11, bought tables and chairs, 7,500 Terms, 2 over 10 and over 30. Yan yung dinidiscuss ko kanina. Yung 2 over 10 means there is a 2% cash discount if paid within 10 days. Okay. Ano yung N over 30? This one? N over 30. Ano nga ang N over 30? N over 30 is? That is the... 30 is the credit period. So, meaning we have to pay within 30 days. Pag nagbayad ka within 10 days, may 2% discount ka. So, anong accounts affected? Furniture and fixture. Asset ito. Anong nangyari? Nag-increase. 
Ano pang affected? Accounts payable. Anong klaseng account? Liability. Bakit liability? Naka-terms eh. Wala namang sinabing nagbayad tayo ng cash. Merong terms. 2 over 10 and over 30. Meaning, inutang ito. So, what happened to liability? Nag-increase the rules. Increases in asset, debit. Okay? Increases in liability, credit. Okay. Let us have this entry. June 11, debit, furniture, and fixture, 7.5. Credit, accounts payable, 7.5. Okay? Equal ba? Yes. O, oh, madali lang to. Ang next na problema dito is, di ba inutang natin to? So, magbabayad tayo. So, lagi nating tatandaan, pag nagbayad tayo, uh, iti-check natin na avail ba natin si discount o hindi. Paano malaman if na-avail si discount? Kapag nagbayad tayo within 10 days. Ilang percent ang ating discount? We have 2% cash discount. Okay. What if yung inutang natin kanina, magbabayad na tayo? Oh, with a discount daw. Meaning, nagbayad tayo within the discount period. O balikan natin ha, June 11 natin siya binile. Nung June 19, oh, we paid the tables and chairs bought on June 11. Hmm. Nagbayad tayo. So, analyze tayo ng transaction. Anong affected? Accounts payable. Bakit affected sa accounts payable? Nagbayad tayo eh, ng utang. Anong type ng account ito? Liability. What happened to liability when we paid the tables and shares? Nag-decrease. Nabawasan. Bakit? Nabawasan ang utang. Nagbayad tayo eh. Ano pa ang affected? Furniture and fixture. Anong type ng account? Asset. What happened? Nag-decrease. Bakit nag-decrease? Or later, we are going to know why. Basta tandaan, nag-decrease. See, asset, furniture and fixture. And then we have cash. Type of account, asset, of course. What happened to our cash or asset? Nag-decrease. Bakit nag-decrease? Siyempre, nagbayad tayo, nabawasan ng ating pera. So, rules, decreases in liability, debit. Decreases in asset, okay, credit. So, credit yung dalawang yan. Entry natin, debit. Okay, accounts payable, 7.5. Credit, furniture and fixture. O, tingnan na, take note ha, credit, furniture and fixture, magkano? 150 pesos. Saan nang gagaling si 150 pesos? So, tingnan nyo mabuti credit tayo ng furniture and fixture. Bakit tayo nag-credit? Diba sabi natin kanina nag-decrease si furniture and fixture? 150. Bakit kaya siya nabawasan ng 150? Saan galing yan? Because there is a cash discount of 150 pesos. Kaya nabawasan si furniture and fixture kasi may discount na 150 pesos. Paano na compute ang 150 pesos? 2% times 75. Magkano mo binili? 7,500 times 2%. Ano yung 2%? Ito ay nanggagaling doon sa 2 over 10. Ano yung 2 over 10? You have a 2% discount if you pay within 10 days. So, because the payment was made within the discount period of 10 days, we are going to, what? Have a 2% discount. So, nagbayad nga ba within 10 days? Yes. Kailan natin... Uh, binayaran, June 19. Kailan natin binili? June 11. So, June 19 minus 11, we have 8 days. So, 8 days. After 8 days natin binayaran. So, nagbayad tayo within the discount period of 10 days. So, we have a 2% discount, 150 pesos. Credit cash, magkano? 7,350. Saan ang gagaling si 7,350? Yung ating 7,500 na utang, Minus yung discount na 150. Okay. Ayan. Ayan. So, laging tatandaan, if discounts or returns are made, the credit will be the fixed asset account because discounts and returns decrease the cost of the fixed asset. So, bakit nabawasan si furniture and fixture? Kasi nga, ang effect ng discount ay alen binabawasan niya ang cost ng ating fixed asset. So, ang halaga na lang talaga ng fixed asset natin ay 7,350 na lang. 
Okay? We're done. I hope na intindihan nyo ang um, mga diniscuss natin examples. And again, if you have questions, comment lang. And if I have time, um, I will answer all your questions. So thank you for watching this video. I hope you learned something. And I hope you are going to enjoy accounting. So God bless you all. Hello guys, our next video is about accounting for income. So we have two methods, liability method and income method. So if you use liability method, then liability account is credited when money is received. Let us have this example. On December 15, 2019, Leia May Fragosa receives 10,000 commission in advance. So Dito, nakatanggap tayo ng commission. So, this is an income. So, paano ba natin siya i-rejournalize? So, depende sa method na ginamit. If you use liability method, then, this will be the entry. Debit cash, 10,000. O, nag-debit tayo ng cash because naka-receive tayo ng pera, 10,000. Credit, unearned commission income, 10,000. Unearned commission income is a liability account. So, we use liability method because we credited a liability account which is an earned commission income when we receive the payment or the uh, money worth 10,000 as commission in advance. Another method is the income method. So you use income method if income account is credited when money is received. So using the same example, on December 15, 2019, Leia May Fragosa receives 10,000 commission in advance. So this time, we use income method. So what will be the entry? Debit cash, 10,000 kasi naka-receive tayo ng pera. So we debit cash. Then credit, commission income, 10,000. So income method ito because we credited an income account which is commission income. So... In case na ang problem is silent about the method to be used, then the income method is always used. So hopefully, nakatulong ito para mas maunawaan yung dalawang methods ng pag-record ng income. The liability method and the income method. Again, kung hindi pa nakasubscribe, please click subscribe and hit the notification bell so that you will be updated in my latest na videos uploaded. Thank you so much for watching and I hope you learned something today. Hello guys, our next video is about accounting for expenses. So we have two methods, asset method and expense method. So kapag meron tayong expenses, at nagbayad tayo, paano ba natin siya nire-record? So, you use asset method if asset account is debited at the time of the payment. So, for this example, on December 1, 2019, the business paid 15000 for a 3-month rental starting December 1. So, if you use asset method, this is the entry. Debit, prepaid rent, 15000 Credit cash, 15000 so, bakit natin nasabi na ginamit natin ang asset method? Because we debited prepaid rent which is an asset account. For example number 2, on October 1, 2019, paid the annual insurance premium of 24000 Using asset method, what will be the entry upon payment? Debit, prepaid insurance, 24000 Credit cash, 24000 So, bakit siya asset method? Because we debited prepaid insurance which is an asset account. I hope naintindihan ito. Then another method is the expense method. So, you use expense method if expense account is debited at the time of the payment. So, using the same example, on December 1, 2019, the business paid 15000 for a 3-month rental starting December 1. What will be the entry using expense method, debit rent expense, 15,000, credit cash, 15,000.
So, bakit natin nasabi na rent ex ana expense method ang ating ginamit? Because we debited an expense account. For example, number 2, on October 1, 2019, paid the annual insurance premium of 24000 So, using expense method, this will be the entry. Debit insurance expense 24000 Credit cash 24000 So, we use expense method because we debited an expense account. A reminder, what if the problem is silent about the method to be used? Then kung hindi sinabi whether asset or expense method, then please use expense method. So kadalasan yun yung ginagamit, expense method, if the problem is silent. So I hope nakatulong tong video na to because this video is very important when it comes to adjusting entries of prepaid expenses. Thank you guys for watching. And again, kung hindi pa nakasubscribe, please click subscribe and hit also the bell para ma-notify kayo ng mga susunod pa ng mga videos. Thank you so much. Hello guys, our next video is about discounting of notes. Another source of cash is by discounting a note. A business may borrow from banks or lending institutions by issuing a note. So when a note is discounted, the interest is deducted in advance. So the cash received is lower than the face of the note. When I say the face of the note, it is known as the principal of the note. When the note is paid at maturity, there is no more interest to be paid but simply the face of the note. So, let us have this illustration. So, we have uh, two examples here. The first one is discounting a note payable and the second is discounting a note receivable. So, the first one, discounting a note payable. This is our illustration. On July 1, 2019, SM Trading owned by Shimabel discounted a 60-day 15% promissory note with Alwyn Bank in the amount of 20,000 pesos. On August 30, 2019, paid the note. Okay, so yan yung ating mga transactions. Now we go to the journal entries on July 1, 2019. So again, ano yung transaction natin? SM Trading owned by Shima Bell discounted a 60-day 15% promissory note with Alwyn Bank in the amount of 20,000 pesos. So the first thing that you will do is compute the interest. O, bakit unang kukupitin ang interest? Kasi nga, uh, discounted ang ating note. So, in discounting, tinatanggal na natin ang interest. So, we need to compute first the interest. Okay. So, what is the formula in the computation of interest? The formula is principal times rate times time. So, our principal is 20,000. Our rate is 15% and our time is 60 days. So, yung rate natin should be expressed in decimals and time should be expressed in years. So, this is the computation. Interest is equal to 20,000 times 0 0.15 times 60 over 360 is equal to 500 pesos. So, ang interest natin ay 500 pesos. Anong klaseng account yon? Since tayo ang nag-issue ng note, meaning tayo ang nag-promise na mag-pay, so our note, note is note payable. So since ito ay notes payable and this is interest bearing, yung interest na na-compute natin ay interest expense. So yung 500 pesos is interest expense. Okay. So since tinanggal na yung 500 pesos na interest, then magkano na lang yung ating cash na matatanggap? Ang cash natin matatanggap is the principal of 20,000 minus 500 na interest equivalent to 19,500 pesos na lang. So this is our journal entry, debit cash 19,500, debit interest expense 500, credit notes payable 
20,000. So, na, saan ang galing si 19,500? So, ayan yun. And then, si interest expense and our 20,000 is the face of the note. So, ayan yung pinanggalingan ng ating entry. So, I hope na kukuha. Then, on August 30, 2019, Uh, binayaran na natin yung note. So, what will be the entry? So, pang nagbayad ng note, ano yung laging tatandaan? So, kahit na sinabi na na 60 days siya, lagi mo pa rin i-check ang number of days incurred. Bakit lagi mo i-check yon? Kasi minsan, ang note ay binabayaran in advance or minsan binabayaran siya beyond the maturity date. So, ano ang masusunod? Yung actual na days. So, i-check muna natin. Uh, July 1, tayo nag-issue ng notes. So, there are 31 days in July. 31 days minus 1. So, we have 30 days in July. And, sa August, nagbayad tayo ay August 30. So, we have 30 days in August. Total is 60 days. So, check natin. Ang ating note na initial ay 60 day 15% promissory note. So, meaning, nagbayad tayo at maturity date. Another na tatandaan is that when a note is discounted, the interest is deducted in advance. So, meaning, upon payment, hindi na tayo magkocompute ng interest kasi nga nabayaran na natin siya noong nag-issue tayo ng note kasi nga discounted ito. So, when the note is paid at maturity, there is no more interest to be paid but simply the face of the note. So, paano ang ating entry? Debit, notes payable, 20,000, credit cash, 20,000. So, yan ang ating entry upon payment on August 30, 2019. So, ang isang pwede din is that the business may lend cash to debtor. Tayo naman ang magpapahiram. So, the interest is likewise deducted in advance. So, let us reverse the situation. The same problem tayo. Yun nga lang, ang nagpahiram ngayon is si Shimabel or si SM Trading. So, on July 1, 2019, SM Trading owned by Shimabel lent 20,000 to Pearl Joy. SM Trading received a 60-day 15% promissory note from Pearl Joy and interest is deducted in advance. So, nagpa-discount si Pearl Joy sa atin ng note. So, in short, tayo ang nakatanggap ng promissory note. August 30, received payment from Pearl Joy. So, let us analyze the transactions. So, July 1, 2019, analyze mo na natin. Okay. So, una, compute tayo ng interest. Principal times rate times time. So, 20,000 ang ating principal, 15% ang ating rate, 60 days ang ating time. So, dinivide natin siya ng 360 kasi time should always be expressed in years. So, ang ating interest ay 500. So, magkano na lang ang ibibigay nating pera kay Pearl Joy? Ang ibibigay na lang nating pera is 19,500 kasi nga 20,000 yung hinihiram niya, deducted na ang interest, 19,500 na lang ang ating ibibigay na cash. So, what will be the entry? Debit, notes receivable, 20,000, credit cash, 19,500 credit interest income 500 pesos take note na yung ating interest na account dito ay interest income kasi nga tayo ay nakatanggap ng note so ang note natin ay note receivable interest bearing siya so ibig sabihin may interest income tayo na ma-earn I hope na intindihan ito so saan ang gagaling yung ating entry The note receivable is the face of the note. Yan yung ating cash. And ito naman ang pinanggalingan ng ating interest. Okay. I hope na kukuha. So, on August 30, we received payment from Pearl Joy. Nagsettle na. So, again, iti-check muna natin ang number of days earned. So, July, we have 30 days. August, we have 30 days. Total is 60 days. So, ibig sabihin, si Pearl Joy nagbayad siya at maturity date. 
No pangtatandaan, when a note is discounted, the interest is deducted in advance. So therefore, when the note is settled at maturity, there is no more interest to be received but simply the face of the note. So our entry will be debit cash 20,000, credit notes receivable 20,000. So madali lang siya, di ba? So ano yung mga reminders sa discounting of notes? Una, check mo if the note is interest bearing or non-interest bearing. Kasi kung non-interest bearing, wala naman tayo masyadong problema. Wala nang nakakabit na interest. But if it is interest bearing, check mo. Ano ba ang hawak mo? Uh, notes payable ba? Kung notes payable, ikaw ang nag-issue or ikaw ang nag-promise. So you issued a note. Laging tatandaan kapag interest bearing, ang notes payable, may nakakabit yon or kakambal na interest expense. If ikaw naman ang nakatanggap ng note, okay, tayo nagpahiram, so we have a notes receivable, kapag interest bearing yon, may kakambal yun na interest income. And laging i-check upon payment or collection, check the number of days incurred or earned. 